The second video in this series on second order modelling looks at resistor, inductor, capacitor circuits. So we're going to build on the first order modelling videos which looked at resistor capacitor circuits and resistor inductor circuits. And here what we're going to do is going to put all three components together and have a resistor inductor capacitor circuit. The modelling is going to be based on a simple Kirchhoff's laws. And finally, we're also going to look at the analogies between resistor inductor capacitor circuits and mass spring damper systems, which were covered in the previous video in this particular series. So a reminder then of what we did in the first order video series. If you have a system which has a resistor and a capacitor connected in series, then what you can do is calculate the voltage across the resistor, the voltage across the capacitor, and then use Kirchhoff's law to find the model. So you'll see that's what was done here. We said, what's the voltage across the resistor? There you are. It's I1 R1 or R1 dQ dt. What's the voltage across the capacitor? Q over C and Kirchhoff's voltage law, which gives you V equals V1 plus V2. You put those three together and you end up with your first order model that was discussed in an earlier video. What if you've got a resistor inductor in series? Then we said, OK, calculate the voltage across the resistor, calculate the voltage across the inductor and use Kirchhoff's law again. So there we have the voltage across the resistor, IR1, the voltage across the inductor, L di dt, and Kirchhoff's law, V equals V1 plus V2. Put those three together and you get your first order model, as discussed in the earlier video series. Now, what you'll see is the modelling of these series circuits was based upon Kirchhoff's voltage law. In essence, we add the voltages across all the components together and match that to the applied voltage. And that's all we're going to do in order to model the RLC electrical circuit. And you'll note here that it's not the purpose of these videos to do extensive analysis and modelling of electrical circuits. Okay? What we're really doing is looking at simple modelling because the focus of these whole video series is on system behaviours. So here's our resistor inductor capacitor circuit. So how are we going to model it? Well, you'll see the standard technique we've used, if we said first, find the voltage across the resistor. Let's call that V1. The voltage across the inductor. Let's call that V2. The voltage across the capacitor. Let's call that V3. And then apply Kirchhoff's voltage law. So let's see what we've got. We've got V1 equals I R. We shouldn't have a one there, just I R keeps it simple. Or R dQ dt. The voltage across the inductor is L di dt. Or L d2q dt squared. The voltage across the capacitor, Q over C. And Kirchhoff's voltage law, V equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. So all I'm going to do is take this V1 and plug it in here. This V2 and plug it in here. This V3 and plug it in here. And hence, this is what you get. V equals L d2q dt squared plus R dQ dt plus 1 over C times Q. And the key thing to note is this is a simple second order model. And this resistor inductor capacitor is a classic circuit with classic second order dynamics. Now a reminder of some analogies. What we said earlier is if you're trying to do an analogy between a mechanical system and an electrical system, common things to look at are that voltage might be analogous with force. Displacement might be analogous with charge. A damper has an analogous role to a resistor. They both dissipate energy. A spring is analogous to a capacitor. They both store energy as displacement or as a charge. Current is analogous with velocity. They both have units of per second. Mass is analogous with an inductor. So they store energy when there is some form of velocity or a current flowing. And we also found that in parallel mechanical arrangements, that is where the force is shared between the components, are analogous to series electrical, because there the voltage is shared between the components.
Now what we want to do is see if these analogies, which we looked at extensively when we were doing first order systems, also carry across to these second order systems. So here were the first order system analogies. Just as a reminder, you'll see we had a spring and a damper, and we said this was analogous to a capacitor and a resistor, because the capacitor is analogous. There's something gone wrong here. Um, capacitor stores energy as charge, and the resistor dissipates energy as heat. And if you look at the mechanical analogy, you'll see the spring stores energy as displacement, so that's analogous to the capacitor, and the damper dissipates energy as heat, which is analogous to the resistor. So if you looked at the two equations, there they were, you see that the damper was in the same position as the resistor, multiplying on the derivative, and the spring was in the same position as the capacitor. So we had analogous components, models, and behaviours. Similarly, we looked earlier at the resistor inductor and the mass damper. So what we saw was that the damper has essentially the same role as the resistor, and we found the mass has the same role as the inductor. And if we looked at the equations, here we are for the mechanical system, you'll see the mass is in the same position as the inductor, and the damper appears in the same position as the resistor. So those were covered in the videos on first order systems. What we want to do now is say, does it carry across to the second order example? Well, here's our two second order examples, the mass spring damper and the resistor inductor capacitor. So what are the analogies? Well, the mass will store energy linked to velocity, and the inductor stores energy linked to the flow of charge. So we've got meters per second or coulombs per second. Now let's see where those two terms appear in the equations. I've got an m d 2 x dt squared down here, and an l d 2 q dt squared. So they've appeared in analogous positions in terms of their impact. What about the resistor? Well, the resistor dissipates energy as heat when current is flowing. A damper dissipates energy as heat when there is a velocity. So they're analogous components. Where do they appear in the equations? We'll see here's the damper, B dx dt. Here's the resistor, R dq dt. You see they've appeared in analogous positions in the equation. Finally, we look at a capacitor which stores charge as energy and a spring which stores displacement as energy. And what about them? Well, lo and behold, the spring has appeared here as a kx and the capacitor has appeared here, again, in analogous positions. So what you can see, you have got analogous components, analogous models, and therefore, ultimately, you'll have analogous behaviours. If you understand how mass spring damper systems work and what's the impact of changing a mass on the behaviour, then you can equally understand how RLC work, circuits work and what would be the impact, for example, of changing the inductor. So a summary. We've illustrated the model derivation for a simple series arrangement for resistor, inductor and capacitor, or a so-called RLC circuit, and it gives a simple second-order differential equation as follows, expressed in terms of charge. We've shown that the model has got strong analogies with mass spring damper systems because the models have got the same structures and therefore, and this is the key thing, they must share the same underlying behaviours. And that's really helpful when you're understanding how systems behave because if you've got the sort of mindset that works well with mechanical systems, you can use that mindset to understand electrical systems and, of course, vice versa.